Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I'm going to put together some vignettes, and I'm going to uh, make a few items to go in them. So, I'm still working in the farmhouse kitchen area of the store, and I'm going to start with this grungy bread box. It's in good condition. It's just very, very dirty. So, and I got some little bonuses here when I bought this one. I didn't realize. Uh, but anyway, I scrubbed this really good. Uh, I ended up uh, using a degreaser on it and really, really scrubbing. And then I got the alcohol out and I cleaned it with alcohol. And I finally got it down to where I could uh, put a brown wax on it. And because I wanted to get rid of the red tone, I even added a little black uh, to it after I put the brown wax on it. And I let that stay on before I really wiped it off much. Uh, because again, I wanted to make sure and get rid of all this red. And then because I want to keep this a bread box, um, then I found a stencil that I uh, said bakery on it and that's what i'm going to put on the lid of this so i made sure to really really wipe all this wax off and let that dry before i did my stenciling now i felt like i needed a white ink uh, to show up on this so i'm going to use both black and uh, cotton white ink um, from stays on and um so, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the white ink is a completely different consistency than, uh, than the black. Uh, so, I end up having to do a couple of coats on the white. Now, I could have used paint on this, but any time that I can use ink, I would rather use ink because um, it just goes on smoother and you just get a lot crisper stenciling, I think, uh, when you can use ink. And I'm just using a, a regular uh, stenciling brush. I started out with a, a another type of brush, just a little artist brush, and I cut the bristles short and uh, just wasn't happy with how that was working. So I ended up taping this in place and using just a regular stenciling brush. But I like using a couple of different colors on stencils when I can. And again, I felt like I needed the white here to show up well, but I wanted some of the black on it too. So um, this stencil I did in both black and white. And I love the simple look that I ended up getting. I thought about putting something on the front of it, but I, I felt like it was good the way it was. And then I took a towel that I had, just a little uh, kitchen towel, and decided to stencil on the front of it with the stays on ink. Now you can wash the stays on ink as long as uh, you let it dry really well. So just to make sure that it was dried really well, I took an iron and um, went over it. So I just put some wax paper down or some parchment paper down and ironed over the top of that and uh, made sure to heat set that in before, uh, before I put it out so that when someone washes it, it will be fine. And then I had this galvanized pitcher that I had spray painted. I just uh, spray painted one coat of black on this and it didn't cover really well but I didn't worry about that because that's just going to be a base coat that I can distress to um, and as it turns out I could have done without that actually because I end up just drawing my distress on with uh, with my stays on ink but first I wanted to put a stencil on or a uh, transfer on this one actually. So this is part of uh, the Dixie Bell transfer set called On the Farm. And I cut the cow off the bottom because that was gonna be too long for this. And this is actually gonna be short. So I'm just gonna add some stenciling on the bottom. I'll just add some words to the bottom and that will make this right. Now I could have taken 
the pig and went on the very bottom and then put my stenciling on the top and maybe I should have done that. In hindsight, that might have worked out better. But this still worked, so I just did my stenciling on the bottom instead. And I'm gonna put this little stencil farm life on here, but instead of doing it uh, one over the top of the other, uh, I just kind of uh, centered it to where I could do farm life in one line, and I think that worked out better. Again, I know I've said it before, but anytime that you're using the larger stencils, uh, you don't have to use the whole thing, and in this case, you don't even have to use it the way uh, the words are on the stencil. You can actually just do one word at, at a time. So once I finish this stencil, then I'm going to take that stays on ink from the pad, and I'm just going to kind of rub the ink pad uh, over all the the edges and that will kind of make it um, it'll make that black almost look like you have uh, the uh, the white enamel with the black around the edges but I'm not going to do full coverage on that so it'll kind of be a cross between that and just a heavy distress but I felt like I needed to add quite a bit of that black uh, just because I'm using the black lettering on this. As you can see, that worked out really well just to do those uh, side by side. And now again, I'm taking that, uh, that ink pad and just kind of rubbing it uh, along all the edges. That's a really good way to do distress, but also a good way to uh, give it the enamel look. And then once this is finished, then uh, I'm going to spray this with a clear finish. Now, I could go shiny on this and make it look even more like enamel, but I didn't want to do that. So I ended up going with uh, a satin finish on it. And then I had a rolling pin that I had already painted the handles black on and uh, the base of it white. So this will be uh, for decorative pur purposes only. And anytime that you paint, paint it, it's pretty obvious to people that it is decorative only. So here are some of the stencils that I had left over from the set, uh, the Dixie Bell set on the farm. And I'm gonna put this one on one side of the rolling pin, and then on the other side, I'm gonna put those three little hens. And then um, I will finish this off with a clear uh, matte finish. And I just used a uh, the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray on this. And then once I finish this one, then I'm gonna do one more rolling pin, and then I will, um, I'm gonna show you how I put one of the vignettes together, and then I'll show you all the vignettes. I actually did them all, uh, but somehow I have uh, lost the footage. It could be on my other phone at the shop, and if it is, and I'm able to find it, then I will add it to my, to my next video and show you how I put those vignettes together. But I'm not sure if I just lost the footage altogether or not. I end up using today because I ran my phone battery down. I end up using um, the shop phone also for filming and maybe I left it on the shop phone. I'm not sure. But again, if I find that, then I'll add it to my next video. Now, I like to, when I'm doing rolling pins, I like to make sure that there is something on both sides and all the way around if if the design works that way. But this one, I, I had to just do two designs on it. And um, again, I just want to make sure that from both angles, you'll be able to see, uh, you'll be able to see something on it. Now, to get the color of green that I wanted on this one, uh, I mixed the color evergreen, half evergreen, and half pine cone. 
and both of those are Dixie Belle colors and I, there you can see that I scooped up some of that pine cone with my brush and got the green in my pine cone so I'm going to have to clean that lid before I put that on but as you can see a combination of both of those colors and I did about half and half uh, makes a really pretty green so uh, that's the color that I did on the handles now because I feel like Dixie Belle has uh, a lot of room uh, between their green colors uh, to have some other colors of green uh, I end up mixing greens more than any other but I, I don't mind because I enjoy mixing colors and on this one, I'm using another transfer from that same set, uh, and I opened a new um, a new cylinder of this same transfer and started another one. So I end up with two of this one, and I'm going to use this same stencil on or transfer rather on both sides because it's the green that I want. I always purchase rolling pins at thrift stores or wherever I am if I can get them for usually about five dollars and under I will buy them uh, it's very easy to find them at thrift stores for either $3.99 or $4.99 which is usually what I pay um, but I like to uh, have plenty of these because you can do them in different colors and then in some cases I, I don't do it very often but in some cases like I have with these two I add transfers and sometimes even stamps so uh, but but for the most part I just paint my handles and um, that way you can still use the rolling pins uh, but they'll make pretty decor it's just a good little piece to add to a vignette uh, to kind of make it go together more and again, I'm going to go on the opposite side and do the same transfer. And I just had to kind of eyeball it and see where was the center of those two so that it would be, uh, so that it would be the right distance between each one. And again, once I put this transfer on, then uh, I will finish it off with a clear matte finish and again I use Rust-Oleum but you can use any clear finish that you want I use whatever I can find cheaper I use Krylon sometimes and sometimes Rust-Oleum this farmhouse area had really really gotten bare so um, I'm really starting to fill it up and um, I'm excited to see it full again, and I'm excited that it's going to be full again before we have our Christmas open house. But now that I have my sister helping me, uh, she does a lot of the same things that, uh, that I do, and uh, so she can help me keep an eye on it and help me keep it filled up when we get bare spots. Now, this is the vignette that I'm going to... Uh, do on on camera and this is just a little farmhouse table that I have against a wall so I'm just kind of let you see how I put it together and because I have that uh, barnwood background uh, I needed something light in the back so um, that this is just a little screen that I've had for some time that is stenciled on top of and I didn't even do this. I bought it like that. But I, I put me some white in the back because, again, I just wanted my items to show up well. And I always like to add height to the back and add layers. Um, I'm using the little chair, in this case, as a riser. So uh, that will add another layer to that side and give me another little area to decorate. Now again, I've uh, lost the footage of all my other vignettes, uh, but I'll show them very closely and kind of talk you through those. I know that on my 
my older videos i used to do a lot of vignettes and uh, so i'm going to try to get back into some of that um, i feel like it takes more time and space to do those and that's why i've kind of gotten away from them some but i'm going to try to fit them in when i have the opportunity to so as you can see here, um, I'm using both the wood tones and the white. That's kind of my color scheme here. And I can add little pops here and there, but the main part of this, uh, I want to keep the, the wood tones and the white. And now I'm just adding a little riser there in the back so that I can lift that little picture up and you'll be able to see it behind the bread box that I'm gonna put in the front. These bread boxes are really pretty done in white uh, with stencils or stamps on them. Uh, but I just wanted to keep this one, I wanted this one to look older, I guess, and that's why I decided to keep it in the wood tone. So here I am adding that wooden, tr wooden uh, dough bowl to the seat of this so that I would have a hard surface to put these jars on. Again, wood tones and uh, white is what I'm going with, but I'm going to add just a little pop of color uh, by adding some blue ball jars to this. Now, I don't know how you guys do with the blue ball jars, but I used to sell them really well. And they just don't, they're a slow sell now, but I like to have them because... Uh, I just think they look good in a lot of the vignettes. And for some reason, no matter how many of the blue ball jars we have, my husband always buys more. So he fusses at me for buying a lot of chairs, and I do. Uh, but he buys way too many ball jars. But again, they make a good little item to add a pop of that color. And they definitely work really well in the farmhouse kitchen area. And these brown jars are another thing that used to sell well and they've slowed down. Uh, but I'm not worried about that because come fall, I, I know that they'll sell well. Now, because I have that blue uh, on the right side, then I felt like I needed uh, to put some greenery in the uh, pitcher that had almost a blue tone to it. So my first thought was lamb's ear because lamb's ear has kind of a bluish uh, tone to it. So I tried that and wasn't real happy with how that looked. So I end up changing that out and uh, going with a little bit darker uh, foliage in that. But as you can see, from start to finish, it didn't take very long at all to do this vignette. And now I'm going to do just a little side vignette to this. And my friend Gina uh, is very good about bringing me some of her yard sale finds. I don't get many chances to go to yard sales. But she'll be out and see an item that she thinks I'll like. And she's so good about picking it up. So... This little chair is, uh, is what she brought me the other day, and I love how crusty it is. She knew that I would, and so I'm going to use this one just for staging, and uh, she brought me some drawers that I'll be using in another vignette in this video, uh, but sometimes when I get items that are just perfectly crusty, I don't want to sell them. I want to use them just for staging. Now, I don't know if you guys know what this is. It's like a cutting board, but it has the ridges in it, and then it has that ridge all the way around the edges, like it, um, almost like a dish strainer, but I know it's some sort, or I think it's some sort of cutting board. If you guys know what that is, let me know in the comments. I, I've tried to figure that out, and I stage it, staged it with a uh, tag that had a picture of a watermelon on it because I felt like this would be perfect for cutting watermelon on because you're going to catch all your liquid and you'll be able to cut it. And I think maybe that's what that is. That's the only thing that I can come up with. 
Now this is just a little, um, some quilt pieces, actually a quilt that was unquilted and uh, we cut it apart and uh, I'm gonna use, some of them I did four squares in and some I did these little small squares like this so that I could use them uh, in my vignettes when I needed certain colors. And because this one had the browns in it, uh, then I decided to use it on this. Now, anytime you have some dishes, especially dishes that are maybe just okay, these are just some little old soup bowls, um, but they present so much better in a basket. So uh, the same with plates, uh, different dishes, I think, that are somewhat of a set. Uh, they just work so much better, I think, in a basket. And that's one thing that I learned from... Um, from we have in Knoxville we have what's called Knox Area Rescue Ministries and that's one of our big thrift stores probably the biggest in our area and that's one of the things I learned from them is just putting your dishes in a basket it makes all the difference in the world I think now this is at the top of a cabinet and this is one of the vignettes that I that I did and again I'll show that if I find that video but here again I started out with some height in the back uh, with those shutters and then I added uh, the darker color in front of that since I have white walls here and then I went back with the white and and then I added a little color in the front so again I wanted a darker color behind this because of my white walls but then I wanted to bring that white back forward, so I put the white in front of those dark baskets. And then again, just added my color and the yellow in the, in the little flower pot uh, brings the yellow from the daisies forward. Now this vignette has the few remaining Ray Dunn pieces I, that I have. Uh, I used to sell these a lot, and um, I would just buy out people's collections and then, uh, and then sell them, and they sold really well, but this is all that I have left now, and it just doesn't sell that well for me anymore. But again, I put the plates in a basket and just kind of tried to create some different levels uh, by putting some risers in the back. Now with this one, uh, again, I've put some dishes in, in the red basket. And then these little items in the center, I got these uh, at an online auction. And then when I got them and saw them, I don't, I don't even know what they are. I think they're absolutely beautiful. Um, but I have no idea what they are. I just thought that they would look really good in this vignette. And then I have some old cookie cutters that I got at that same auction in this old bowl that I also got at that auction. And it's not showing very well, but I have that clear picture in the back. Now this one also has the baskets with dishes in it. And then I put a couple of my little, uh, my little transfer signs that I made a couple of videos ago and then another small one there in the front. Uh, but I like to use baskets for layering, and I like the color uh, contrast that the baskets give in these little vignettes. Now, this next one is some red wing china that I bought at that same auction, and it looks a lot like the Blue Ridge china. And when I saw it online, that's actually what I thought it was until I read the fine print and saw that it was Red Wing, which I really like it. It's not a complete set and uh, maybe not even something that would draw a whole lot of interest. But when you put it in baskets like this, and this is another one of those old crusty pieces that my friend Gina brought me. And uh, I use this also for staging and uh, it's something she brought me a couple of these and it's a little bit hard to tell here but it's very it has a very cracked finished and uh, i love the color on it and these old old doorknobs it's just drawer pulls rather are just absolutely beautiful so this is something i also use for staging but a drawer is great when you have a larger set of dishes like this you can put some in a basket 
and then some down to the side and then I've got some little risers in the back to lift up some of those back items. Now I have a couple of hang tags to show and one is from Gina, uh, Gina McMahon who gave me these rusty crusty treasures and this is Gina. She said uh, that she put Inspire on there because I inspire her but she inspires me and you guys inspire me. I just I learned so much from all of you, and uh, Gina and I have the same taste, so I'm not surprised that she uses a lot of the same elements that I just love in these hang tags. And this one is from Rhonda from Louisiana, and I love the little mother there uh, folding clothes or holding an item of clothing. I just love the hominess of this one. I think this was so sweet. And Rhonda says she's a fairly new crafter, but you can't tell it from her hang tags because I think she did a wonderful job. And even on the back, she added some scripture, scripture which you know I love. And uh, I love all the, the script that she added and lace. So uh, two beautiful, beautiful hang tags. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.